the haunted Havili. The protagonist, a young woman named Rhea, arrives at the haunted Havili after receiving an invitation from a distant relative. As she enters the Havili, she feels a strange energy around her, and the air becomes thick with an eerie silence. She starts to explore the Havili, and soon she encounters several strange occurrences that make her feel like she's being watched. Doors open and close on their own, and strange noises fill the corridors of the Havili. Despite her fears, Rhea is determined to uncover the truth behind the strange happenings in the Haveli. As she wanders deeper into the Haveli, she discovers a hidden room that reveals a gruesome history. The room is filled with old books and artifacts that tell the tale of a massacre that occurred on the site of the Haveli centuries ago. The spirits of the victims are said to haunt the Haveli, seeking revenge on their killers. Rhea realizes that the strange occurrences she experienced earlier were not just her imagination, but the spirits of the victims trying to communicate with her. She starts to feel a sense of dread and fear, knowing that the Haveli is haunted by vengeful spirits. Rhea decides to investigate further and starts to dig deeper into the history of the Haveli. She discovers that her own family has a dark history that is linked to the massacre that occurred in the Haveli. Rhea's ancestors were said to have played a role in the tragic events that took place, and their sins have been passed down through generations. As she uncovers more about her family's past, she starts to experience strange dreams and visions that leave her feeling haunted. She sees the faces of the victims of the massacre and hears their cries for justice. She begins to feel guilty for the sins of her ancestors and starts to wonder if the spirits are trying to punish her as well. Despite her fears, Rhea is determined to uncover the truth and make amends for the sins of her family. She starts to look for clues that can help her put the pieces together and bring closure to the spirits that haunt the Havili. As she continues her investigation, she discovers that the spirits are not just seeking revenge, but they also want to be heard and understood. Rhea realizes that she must find a way to communicate with the spirits and understand their pain if she wants to bring peace to the Havili. Rhea begins to experience more intense and terrifying paranormal activity as she delves deeper into the history of the haunted Haveli. She hears voices calling out to her, and shadows move across the walls when there is no one there. She starts to feel like she's being watched all the time and becomes increasingly paranoid and anxious. One night, while she's sleeping in her room, she wakes up to find a ghostly figure standing at the foot of her bed. The figure looks like one of the victims of the massacre, and Rhea can feel its pain and anger. She tries to speak to the spirit, but it disappears before she can say anything. Frightened and confused, Rhea turns to a local priest who has experience dealing with paranormal activity. The priest warns her that the spirits of the Havili are powerful and vengeful, and that she must tread carefully if she wants to uncover the truth. Despite the danger, Rhea is determined to continue her investigation and make amends for the sins of her ancestors. She starts to develop a plan to communicate with the spirits and seek their forgiveness. But as she gets closer to the truth, she realizes that breaking the curse on the haunted Havili might be more difficult and dangerous than she ever imagined. Rhea begins to experience more intense and terrifying paranormal activity as she delves deeper into the history of the haunted Haveli. She hears voices calling out to her, and shadows move across the walls when there is no one there. She starts to feel like she's being watched all the time and becomes increasingly paranoid and anxious. One night, while she's sleeping in her room, she wakes up to find a ghostly figure standing at the foot of her bed. The figure looks like one of the victims of the massacre, and Rhea can feel its pain and anger. She tries to speak to the spirit, but it disappears before she can say anything. Frightened and confused, Rhea turns to a local priest who has experience dealing with paranormal activity. The priest warns her that the spirits of the Havili are powerful and vengeful, and that she must tread carefully if she wants to uncover the truth. Despite the danger, Rhea is determined to continue her investigation and make amends for the sins of her ancestors. 
She starts to develop a plan to communicate with the spirits and seek their forgiveness. But as she gets closer to the truth, she realizes that breaking the curse on the haunted Havali might be more difficult and dangerous than she ever imagined. As Rhea continues to explore the haunted Havali, she discovers that there is more to the curse than just the vengeful spirits of the massacre victims. She learns that there are dark forces at play, and that someone is using the spirits for their own nefarious purposes. Rhea starts to uncover clues that lead her to suspect that her distant relative who invited her to the Haveli might be involved in the curse. She starts to see things that make her believe that her relative is conducting dark rituals and trying to harness the power of the spirits for their own gain. Determined to uncover the truth, Rhea starts to investigate her relative's past and discovers that they are involved in black magic and have a history of using the spirits for their own purposes. She realizes that her relative might be trying to use her as a pawn in their dark plans and that she is in grave danger. Rhea starts to feel like she's being watched all the time and becomes increasingly paranoid and fearful. She starts to feel like she's trapped in the Havali and that there's no escape from the darkness that surrounds her. She starts to wonder if she'll ever be able to leave the Havali alive or if she'll be trapped there forever. Rhea's suspicion grows stronger as she discovers more evidence that her relative is involved in the curse on the haunted Havali. She overhears conversations and sees strange rituals being performed in secret rooms of the Havali. One night, Rhea sneaks into one of these rooms and finds evidence that confirms her suspicions. She finds an ancient book of spells and incantations, along with a potion that seems to be used to summon the spirits of the Haveli. As she looks closer, she realizes that the spells in the book are dark and powerful. They are designed to manipulate the spirits and use them for the caster's own purposes. Rhea realizes that her relative is trying to harness the power of the spirits for their own gain, and that they will stop at nothing to achieve their goals. Terrified and alone, Rhea starts to think that she might not be able to get out of the Haveli alive. She realizes that she must act quickly if she wants to stop her relative's evil plans and break the curse on the Haveli. Rhea starts to formulate a plan to stop her relative and break the curse, but she knows that she must be careful. She must avoid the spirits and the traps that her relative has set up to keep her from interfering. Rhea knows that the final confrontation with her relative and the spirits of the haunted Havali is going to be the biggest challenge of her life. Rhea's plan to break the curse and stop her relative's evil plans is coming together. She has gathered all the necessary information, and she knows what she needs to do to save herself and the Haveli. She prepares for the final confrontation with her relative, knowing that it will be the most dangerous and difficult part of her journey. Rhea is determined to break the curse and save the spirits of the Haveli from her relative's evil grasp. As she enters the secret room where her relative is conducting their dark ritual, she feels a chill run down her spine. The room is filled with the spirits of the massacre victims, and they seem to be aware of her presence. Rhea confronts her relative and tries to reason with them, but they are determined to continue with their plans. The two engage in a battle of wills, with Rhea trying to overpower her relative's black magic with her own knowledge and willpower. As the battle intensifies, the spirits of the Havali start to react, drawn to the energy of the confrontation. Rhea realizes that she must break the curse before it's too late, and she starts to recite a powerful incantation that she learned from the ancient book. As she speaks the words, the spirits of the Haveli start to change, becoming less hostile and more peaceful. Rhea realizes that the curse has been broken and that she has succeeded in her mission. Relieved and exhausted, Rhea leaves the Haveli and the spirits behind, knowing that she has done the right thing. She will always remember the haunted Haveli and the spirits that she encountered there, but she is glad to leave the darkness behind and move on with her life. After leaving the haunted Havali, Rhea returns to her normal life, but she can't shake the feeling that something is following her. She starts to have nightmares and sees visions of the spirits from the Havali. Rhea's friends and family notice that she is acting strange and distant, 
and they try to help her. But Rhea knows that she can't tell them the truth about what happened at the Havali, or they will think she's crazy. As her nightmares and visions become more frequent, Rhea starts to research the history of the Havali and the curse. She discovers that the spirits of the massacre victims have been known to follow people who have been in the Haveli, and that they can be difficult to get rid of. Desperate for a solution, Rhea seeks out a spiritual healer who specializes in removing curses and spirits. The healer tells Rhea that the only way to break the curse and banish the spirits for good is to perform a powerful ritual at the site of the Haveli. Rhea agrees to perform the ritual, and she returns to the Haveli with the healer. As they start the ritual, the spirits of the Haveli begin to appear, and Rhea feels their anger and hostility. But as the ritual continues, Rhea starts to feel a sense of peace and calm wash over her. She realizes that she has the power to banish the spirits and break the curse, and she feels a sense of pride and accomplishment. After the ritual is complete, Rhea leaves the Haveli feeling lighter and happier. She knows that the spirits are gone for good, and that she has finally been freed from the curse of the haunted Haveli. After Rhea banishes the spirits from the Haveli, she decides to revisit the place to see if anything has changed. She enters the Haveli cautiously, but to her surprise, she finds that the place is completely transformed. The walls that were once covered in peeling paint and cobwebs are now freshly painted and adorned with beautiful artwork. The musty smell that used to permeate the air is replaced with the aroma of fresh flowers and incense. The whole place is now filled with light and positive energy. As she explores the Havali, Rhea meets a group of people who have taken up residence there. They explain that they have been working to restore the Havali and turn it into a cultural center. They invite Rhea to join them in their efforts and to share her knowledge of the Haveli's history. Rhea is hesitant at first, but she eventually agrees to help. She spends many hours at the Haveli, sharing her stories and helping with the restoration work. As she gets to know the other volunteers, she realizes that they all have a deep appreciation for the history and culture of the place. Together, they work to create a space where people can come to learn about the Havali's past, attend cultural events, and appreciate the beauty of the place. Rhea feels a sense of purpose and belonging that she has never felt before, and she knows that she has finally found a place where she belongs. In the end, Rhea realizes that the curse of the haunted Havali was not just a curse of death and despair, but also a curse of neglect and forgetfulness. By restoring the Havali and bringing it back to life, she has broken the curse and brought new hope to the place. As Rhea spends more time at the Havali, strange things begin to happen again. This time, however, the activity is not malevolent, but rather playful. Objects start moving on their own, doors open and close by themselves, and strange noises echo throughout the halls. However, Rhea is not afraid this time. She knows that the spirits are not trying to harm her, but rather communicate with her. One day, while Rhea is exploring the Havali, she discovers a secret room hidden behind a bookshelf. In the room, she finds an old diary that belonged to the original owner of the Havali. As she starts to read the diary, she realizes that the spirits are trying to tell her something. The diary reveals that the owner of the Havali had a deep love for his daughter, who was taken from him by illness at a young age. The owner had constructed a secret room in the Havali where he kept his daughter's favorite things and where he would go to remember her. As Rhea continues to read the diary, she realizes that the spirits are trying to show her the secret room. She follows their lead and discovers the room, which is filled with toys, books, and other items that belong to the owner's daughter. Rhea feels a deep sense of sadness as she looks at the items, realizing that the owner never truly got over the loss of his daughter. However, she also feels a sense of closure, knowing that she has helped the spirits of the Havali communicate their message. She leaves the room feeling at peace, knowing that she has helped bring healing to the Havali and its spirits. As Rhea prepares to leave the Havali, 
She feels a sense of reluctance to say goodbye to the place that has become a second home to her. However, she knows that she must return to her own life and responsibilities. As she packs her belongings and prepares to leave, she hears a strange voice calling out to her. At first, she thinks it's just her imagination, but the voice becomes louder and more insistent. Rhea follows the voice to a room at the end of a dark hallway. The room is old and dusty, with cobwebs hanging from the ceiling. In the center of the room, there is a strange object that glows with an otherworldly light. Rhea realizes that this object is the source of the strange voice she heard. She approaches it tentatively and reaches out to touch it. As she does, she is transported to a different time and place. She finds herself in the Haveli's courtyard, but everything is different. The Haveli is new and brightly lit, with people bustling around and music playing in the background. Rhea realizes that she has been transported back in time to the Haveli's grand opening. As she looks around, she sees the original owner of the Haveli, the one who had built the secret room for his daughter. He looks happy and proud, showing off his creation to the guests. Rhea realizes that this is the moment when the Haveli was at its prime, before it fell into disrepair and became haunted. She feels a sense of awe and wonder as she witnesses this moment in time. However, as the night wears on, Rhea begins to feel a sense of foreboding. She realizes that the spirits of the Haveli are trapped in this moment, unable to move on from the past. She knows that she must do something to help them, or else they will be trapped here forever. Rhea decides to explore the Haveli further to find a way to help the trapped spirits. As she wanders through the hallways, she begins to notice strange markings on the walls and floor. It's like a trail of breadcrumbs leading her somewhere. Following the trail, Rhea finds herself standing in front of the secret room where the owner's daughter had been kept. As she enters the room, she sees that it is in a state of disarray. The furniture is broken, and the walls are covered in scratches and marks. Rhea senses a strong presence in the room, and she realizes that the daughter's spirit is still here. She approaches the spirit and speaks to her gently, asking what she needs to find peace. The spirit tells Rhea a heartbreaking story of how she was kept locked in the room by her father, who was trying to protect her from a dangerous suitor. She had been promised to marry a wealthy man whom she did not love, and the suitor had tried to rescue her. Rhea realizes that the spirit is still holding onto her past and cannot move on. She decides to help the spirit by finding the suitor's descendants and reuniting them with the daughter's spirit. Rhea does some research and finds the suitor's descendants living in a nearby village. She contacts them and arranges for them to come to the Havali. When they arrive, Rhea introduces them to the spirit of the daughter, who finally finds peace knowing that her suitor never forgot about her. The Haveli is filled with a sense of calm, and the spirits begin to move on to the afterlife. Rhea feels a sense of satisfaction, knowing that she was able to help them find peace and move on from their troubled past. As Rhea begins to leave the Havali, she feels a strange sensation, like something is watching her. She turns around to find a ghostly figure standing behind her. It's the ghost of the former owner of the Havali, who had died in mysterious circumstances. He tells Rhea that he has been waiting for someone like her to come and help the trapped spirits find peace. The owner's ghost tells Rhea about a powerful talisman hidden somewhere in the Haveli, which can be used to break the curse and release the trapped spirits. He warns her that the talisman is protected by dark forces, and she must be careful if she wants to find it. Rhea realizes that this is her final task, and she sets out to find the talisman. She searches the entire Haveli, looking for clues and following the trail of breadcrumbs. Finally, she discovers a hidden chamber where the talisman is kept. As she reaches for the talisman, she feels a sudden jolt of energy. The room begins to shake, and the ghostly figures around her start to scream in terror. Rhea realizes that the dark forces protecting the talisman have been unleashed. She quickly grabs the talisman and begins to run towards the exit, dodging the flying objects and debris. As she reaches the door, she turns around to see the dark forces converging on her. With a burst of energy, 
She uses the talisman to create a powerful shield that repels the dark forces. As the Haveli crumbles around her, Rhea emerges victorious, having broken the curse and freed the trapped spirits. She walks away from the Haveli, knowing that she has done what she came to do. The spirits are finally at peace, and the Haveli can rest easy once again. Days after Rhea left the Haveli, the news of the strange occurrences in the Haveli started to spread. People began to speculate about what might have happened there, and some of them claimed to have seen a young girl leaving the Haveli. The villagers were scared to even go near the Haveli after hearing the rumors of the haunted spirits being finally released. But one night, a group of daring youngsters decided to investigate the Haveli. As they approached the Haveli, they saw a strange blue light coming from inside. The doors and windows of the Haveli were closed, but the blue light was shining through the cracks. As they cautiously approached the Haveli, they heard a soft, whispering voice calling out their names. Suddenly, the blue light grew brighter, and the doors and windows of the Haveli flung open. The group was terrified, and they turned around to run away. But as they ran, they could hear the whispers growing louder and louder until they could no longer ignore them. They stopped and turned around to see a ghostly figure standing in front of them. It was Rhea, who had come back to the Haveli one last time to bid farewell to the spirits she had freed. Rhea told the youngsters that the Haveli was now free from the curse, and the spirits had finally found peace. She warned them not to disturb the spirits again, and bid them goodbye. The youngsters were in shock, but they realized that the Haveli was now free from the curse. They left the Haveli, wondering about the strange occurrences they had witnessed that night. After Rhea's visit to the Haveli, the strange occurrences stopped completely. The villagers were relieved that the curse on the Haveli had finally been lifted, and they slowly started to return to their normal lives. However, the memories of the haunted Haveli still lingered in their minds. Some of them still felt uneasy passing by the Haveli, while others could not forget the strange occurrences they had witnessed. One day, a young girl named Mira came to visit her grandparents in the village. She was fascinated by the stories of the haunted Haveli and decided to visit it herself. As she approached the Haveli, she felt a strange sensation wash over her. She felt like she was being watched, and she could hear faint whispers in the air. Mira decided to enter the Haveli and explore it, but as soon as she stepped inside, she felt a cold breeze brush past her. She felt like she was not alone, and she could sense the presence of the spirits around her. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew the doors shut, and Mira found herself trapped inside. She could hear the whispers growing louder and louder, and she felt like the spirits were trying to communicate with her. She closed her eyes and prayed for the spirits to release her, and suddenly the doors flew open and the wind stopped. Mira ran out of the Haveli, feeling relieved to be free. She realized that the spirits of the haunted Haveli were still present, and they were not ready to let go of their home yet. As time passed, the haunted Haveli became a topic of legend in the village. The villagers would tell stories of the spirits that roamed the halls and the strange occurrences that happened inside. One day, a group of adventurous youngsters decided to explore the Haveli. They had heard the stories but did not believe in the supernatural. As they entered the Haveli, they felt a strange energy surround them. The air was thick with a sense of foreboding, and they could hear the faint sound of footsteps in the distance. They continued exploring the Haveli, their curiosity driving them deeper into the maze of halls and rooms. Suddenly, they heard a loud thud coming from upstairs. They climbed the stairs, and as they reached the landing, they saw a figure standing in front of them. It was a woman dressed in traditional clothing, and she had a sad expression on her face. The youngsters were frightened, but they approached the woman and asked her who she was. She did not respond, but instead gestured for them to follow her. She led them to a room, and as they entered, they saw a family portrait hanging on the wall. The woman pointed to a figure in the painting, and the youngsters realized that it was her. 
They finally understood the story of the haunted Haveli. The woman was the daughter of the previous owners, who had been cursed by a jealous relative. The curse had trapped her and her family's spirits inside the Haveli, and they had been unable to leave. The youngsters left the Haveli, their minds filled with the knowledge of the tragedy that had occurred there. They knew that the spirits of the haunted Haveli would never truly rest until justice had been served.